I think I hear the line there. Lisa Salters, are you there with us? I am. Hey, how are you? Good. Thank you so much. Technology works. We appreciate Third it. Third time is a charm. <laughs> thank you so yeah. much. We hope you're doing well. How are you holding up through all of these difficult times first? Uh, hanging in, you know, as well as can be, can be expected. It, it is, uh, it is difficult times for a lot of people, but as we approach Father's Day this weekend, you've got something special coming for us on E60. Um, can you tell us a little bit about New Eagle Marquise Goodwin and, and what we'll see at noon on Sunday on ESPN? Sure. Well, I met Marquise, first met Marquise um, six years ago in 2014. He was a rookie with the Bills. Um, and uh, he was coming out of uh, out of University of Texas. He was a two sports star there. He starred with the Longhorns, Center, you know, as a wide out on their football team. And he was a, a world class Olympic long jumper. Um, and the hook of our story back then in 2014 was about how he was so driven and motivated uh, because he wanted to be successful in the NFL to help his little sister Deja, who has cerebral palsy. Uh, and has never walked, and um, he wanted to be able to build her a home that was wheelchair accessible, and that was his the driving force in his life. So even back then, uh, you you kind of I kind of got a sense of what kind of a guy Marquise Goodwin is, uh, just a family first, uh, solid individual. Um, that mission was accomplished in 2018. He did, uh, but when he got that big contract with the 49ers, he did uh, end up building uh, or getting, um, buying his mom and his sister uh, a wonderful house and surprising them with that. You, you probably saw that on YouTube. Um, but uh, he's he's also had he and his wife Morgan have, have endured some you know unspeakable tragedy um, in their lives and in their marriage in their quest to become parents. Um, they, uh, you know, Marquise more than anything else, you know, wanted to be, wanted to be a father more than he wants, more than he wanted a Super Bowl championship or, uh, an Olympic gold medal. He wanted to be a dad. And that kind of stems from the fact that his own father wasn't around. Um, and that has been, you know, in addition to helping his family, helping his little sister, being a dad, uh, has always been important to him. And it's been a struggle. Uh, for him. It's something that, you know, some families take for granted, just having children. Uh, for the good ones, it's, uh, it, it's been very difficult. They had a miscarriage in, uh, I'm sorry, not a miscarriage, they had a, a child born, stillborn, in 2017. Uh, I think um, you might remember uh, it was a game, they played the New York Giants, Marquis scored uh, a touchdown and then kind of just collapsed in the end zone, just overcome with emotion. And we didn't find out until after the game that his wife had given birth uh, to their stillborn son, Baby Goodwin, uh, earlier that day. And that's where all that emotion was coming from. He played in the game uh, because Morgan, his wife, told him, go play and play well because it's the only time your son is going to see you play. And, uh, and he did that um, knowing that he had just lost a child that morning. He went out that afternoon and played in a game and scored a touchdown. Um, and that, of course, is horrible enough. It, you, you know, many times it, uh, something like that, a loss like that, can break up a couple because it's just so devastating. It's hard to talk about. It's overwhelming. Um, but the good ones were determined to stick together. They grew even, even closer, uh, and they tried again. And again, uh, they had to suffer the unimaginable. They lost. Uh, twins in 2018 and we we reached out to them to see if they might be willing to just kind of share their story uh, because they're such an uh, an open couple they have a, a YouTube channel uh, they just want to be they want to put out there what a uh, successful fun loving um, healthy African American family looks like and so they put everything on YouTube, and they put the good and the bad. Uh, so when, you know, they when they have had to endure these losses, they've also put that out there on social media, wanting to to show people that you can overcome this, you can persevere, 
Uh, and we asked them if they might be willing to tell their story with us on E60, and they said yes. So I went out to Dallas. Uh, that's where Marquise is from, outside of Dallas, and um, interviewed the Goodwins uh, extensively last July. And it was um, it was a difficult day of interviews because they were talking about these devastating losses. Um, you know, of course, I asked the question, you know, why not adopt? You, you guys can have children. You can have a family another way, a surrogate. Um, and uh, Morgan was determined that she wanted to carry a child to term, and they were determined to keep trying. They did keep trying, and um, I'm happy to say they are now the proud parents of a four-month-old baby, Marae Goodwin, a little girl. Lisa, what's, what, what's it like to do a story like that, to talk to a family about something so near and dear to their hearts? Oh, wow. Um, you know, and, and it's a difficult piece to watch. It will be a difficult piece, piece for folks to watch on Sunday because, uh, like I said, they're very open and they're very forthcoming. They share some very intimate uh, photos um, of the children who did not make it uh, with us. And um, it, I, I feel like, you know, I've been doing this for 32 years now, and uh, many of the stories that I do are difficult to tell, difficult to hear. Um, it's it's challenging when you're interviewing someone and you're um, you know you're watching them relive and recount some of the darkest times in their lives. Um, but I always try to remember something that Dwayne Wade told me once when uh, I did a story about him and his mom. Um, he told me that I, I, I just, I trusted you with this. I trusted you with our story. Um, and to me, that's the, the greatest compliment. Uh, uh, it's an honor and a privilege to tell people's stories, especially ones that are, are so difficult to tell. And you know that people are going out on a limb hoping that you treat their lives and their stories with the respect and the dignity and the integrity um, that all the stories deserve, but especially these ones that are so sensitive. You talk about them <clears throat> wanting people to see a healthy uh, black family, uh, their relationship. At the same time, it seems so important to them to raise awareness about the challenges that they went through because there are so many families going through the same thing. Can you talk about that part of the story where not only are they dealing with the tragedy that passed, but they're trying to pay it forward so that as other families go through this process and this grief, they don't feel alone like the Goodwins did. Yeah, that, uh, that was a big part of this, this, uh, this piece, as I kept saying to them, you know, why do you want to talk about it? And why are you on social media about it? And like, uh, is it hard to talk about, to keep talking about it? Um, and what they kept saying was that this is, we can't be ashamed and we can't not talk about, uh, the bad, the bad things that happened to us. We are people like everyone else. We are aspiring parents like everyone else. And again, you know, that, you know, when something like this happens, when a family loses a, a child, it can rip a marriage apart. It can break couples up. And, uh, the good ones were determined that they were going to talk to each other. They were going to talk. They were going to console each other through this. And they wanted other families and other couples to, to see and to know that they, too, could persevere despite so much heartache and so much grief. Uh, so that was really important to them. They wanted to they wanted people to see them grieve and to get through it so that other families could know that they could do the same thing, that they were not alone, uh, that there were other families out there grieving with them, but other families, too, that are come, have come out on the other side and that they, too, could come out on the other side. This is To me, this story is another example of, of athletes using their platform for, for good in so many different ways. And, and we've seen not only the way that Marquise and his wife have handled this situation, but we've seen over the last few weeks uh, and for so many years, athletes using their platform to advance social causes and, and to help the communities in which they live. 
Uh, what have you seen? I mean, you yourself were an athlete. For people that don't know, Lisa is is from King of Prussia. So welcome back, at least on the air, and uh, played at Penn State. What is what is it like for you to see how athletes are using their platform for good? I think it's wonderful. Um, and, you know, like you said, athletes have been doing it uh, for, for years and years. And it's, it just amazes me. Uh, I think back to when uh, I, I'm trying to think of who was it who told LeBron to just dribble. I mean, it, it, today in 2020, after everything that's happened, we, we think that that, like who would ever say that now? But to think that someone had the audacity to say it four years ago is even, is even amazing to me. Uh, these are people. These are people who have the same uh, dreams and goals and desires and go through the same struggles and challenges that we all do, them and their families. Um, so why, why athletes would not be allowed to use their platform and to use their voices to bring light to whatever cause they find near and dear to them uh, is absurd. And uh, I think it's great to see the athletes um, doing that. But I mean, in Philadelphia has been, I mean, Malcolm Jenkins to me has always just been, you know, even when it wasn't popular to speak out, Malcolm Jenkins was speaking out. Chris Long, you know, even when it wasn't popular to speak out, you know, he was speaking out. And, and, and not just speaking out, those are guys who I admire so much because they were, they were, they were not just talking. They were doing uh, Chris Long and the foundation that he has and all of the, the great things that that foundation has done. Malcolm, the same way, and everything that he was doing uh, in the community with, uh, uh, you know, with community policing and just trying to bridge that, that gap between the community and the police. Um, I mean, those two guys, those are two guys that Philadelphia should be proud of for sure. I hate to even <clears throat> ask about the return of sports because it seems trivial when we're talking about these other topics. But as somebody who has been around these players, has been as close to the action as we can get, what do you think we're going to see as they start to come back in terms of what this looks like? And it seems like some of the players aren't totally sold on it or aren't sure how they want to use their platform as they return. So what are you expecting as somebody who's who's pretty close to this all to see? You know, I don't know. Uh, I think everyone is looking forward with great anticipation to the NBA, NBA coming back to see, can they do this? I know there's a lot of planning going on right now. And, you know, you're seeing all of the, you know, kind of the, 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 the ads on TV, like the NBA is back. But we're still like, what, four or five weeks away from that? And I think everyone is waiting to see, is it going to come back? Does it really come back? What's it look like when it comes back? Um, and if it does come back, it's going, you know, going to be a huge deal. Um, I know we have golf and NASCAR, but I'm talking about our, our four major sports in, in this country. The NBA coming back is going to be a big deal. Uh, in many ways, it will be a model of maybe what we see uh, if college football or the NFL come back uh, on how to, to do things successfully. But either way, for the players who are concerned about coming back, the NBA players who are concerned about coming back because they don't want to distract distract from the uh, from the Black Lives Matter movement, um, I would I think it would be just the opposite because I think once they get back to work and in front of cameras, television cameras, it's not just social media anymore. Now they're in front of cameras and they get to speak and use their platforms and reach even millions uh, of more people. Like I hear what they're saying. But I think that they could have an even greater impact uh, once they get back to, to playing. Well, we can't wait to see you back covering this. And we really appreciate you giving us some time. We encourage everybody to catch After the Storm, the E60 special about Marquise Goodwin airing this Sunday at noon on ESPN. Lisa, thanks so much for the time and for the, uh, the delicate nature with which you seem to handle this, this challenging issue. Thank you very much, and have happy Father's Day to you guys, and happy Father's Day to my own dad, Glenn Salters, out there in King of Prussia. Thank, thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much for the time, Lisa.